I guess for starters, talk about the work. Hard to believe this horse just ran nine days ago? Yes. Hi. You know, um, there's a lot to him. He is a very durable horse, and uh, I think the best is yet to come from him. And you talked before about you really like the spacing of the races at the fairgrounds and the distances, but then you had to kind of call an audible with him to, to get him into the Kentucky Derby. The uh, absolutely. He, he's a horse we missed a little time with uh, unscheduled over the winter in New Orleans and uh, we're behind. His one opportunity in a points race was the Louisiana Derby and uh, he ran solid but uh, needed more points to get in it and uh, he's a horse we definitely didn't want to miss this opportunity with. So what were you looking for in the in the work today? A little sense of direction. I think that he's uh, um, not giving us everything um, to this point and uh, think that there's more in the tank and just um, like how he accelerated uh, to the wire and went over the racetrack really nicely. He looked like he could have given a bit more today as well, Steve. He's There's a lot there. I, there is. And uh, you know, talk about the like and the spacing of the races at uh, the, the series at the fairgrounds. I mean, we were talking about Epicenter last year and how his numbers progressed. We're obviously in a very different situation with this arm this year. And uh, he is, hopefully he's getting to his best level at exactly the right time. You, you've got the gun runner jacket on. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Does, does he, does arm remind you? Oh, tremendously. <laughs> he looks like him so much. I mean, um, several of the pictures when he broke his maiden at Saratoga last summer, you know, just it, his head markings and his his head and stuff. Um, but the, he's actually probably a bigger physical than Gunrunner was as a three-year-old, but uh, they are uh, look-alikes. Chip off the old block. He's, I hope so. <laughs> he's um, the second in the, the, the Louisiana Derby. is a very paceless derby. Were you at all pleased yesterday to see Jace's Road draw into the race and perhaps inject a little bit of speed that has up until this point been lacking from the race? I, I think that it's uh, quite obvious that the major players do lack pace um, in this year's derby. We're very different um, from years past, but uh, it'll be... You know, 20 across uh, the quarter pole will um, be a lot of jockeying in the first eighth of a mile. Be very curious this year. With you needing that race um, the other week, last week to get in, was, how much confidence does it give you that he was able to perform in a big spot when you needed it? Well, I, I was extremely concerned going from the mile and three sixteenths back to a mile and a sixteenth, and uh, another race that didn't have the pace <laughs> that you would have liked to be ideal for results, but it, I think it was just enough, um, just enough to get in, and I, the way he came out of it and worked back this morning, it uh, um, might might end up being a blessing in disguise. Well, another day, another record for you. On um, Saturday at Oakland, you became the all-time winningest trainer there, and you did so with another Winchell horse, yeah. Red Route One, <laughs> right. who now has a free spot in the Preakness, if you would. Yeah, well, he you know, uh, just got up, I mean, two weeks in a row at, at Oak Lawn. We had with Clarier just getting up in the Apple Blossom and Red Route. The last couple jumps have been very fortuitous to us the last couple of weeks there. But uh, Red Route won, earning a berth in the Preakness. But um, with him, you know, Winchell Thoroughbreds and same how Disarm runs will have everything to do with you know, where Red Route 1 goes next. You hope he's not running in the Preakness. That's kind of ironically, I, yeah. <laughs> ironically, I hope Red Route One doesn't run in the Preakness because that means it uh, disarms a better choice for us there. The way we have a lot to do between now and that decision. Though. <laughs> With the way last year's Derby ended, how excited are anxious are you to get back into this year's race? <laughs> it's it's kind of funny, you know the. Loved how disarm. I loved how disarm worked today and went over the racetrack and I was kind of laughing at myself at uh, the optimism that a trainer has. You know how many times you can get hit over the head before you. Ever, but 
love our chances, uh, love the opportunity, and we're just extremely fortunate to be here again. Yeah, do you thinking, where was the lack of pace we could have used it last year? And this year we could use the pace from, <laughs> or you go crazy if you. Right, it, those, those things are, it just, um, been fortunate to be in the Derby, but I haven't been fortunate enough to win it, so, but we're, we're not about to give up, so we'll be okay. Would you say you immediately got over it last year, or are you still not over it? I, I never get over anything, you know, you don't, you don't, you know. No matter where you end up, should have been a couple more in there somewhere, right? Just a, a question about being the all-time winningest trainer at Oakmont, as you are at other tracks, including Churchill Downs and Lone Star and probably Remington. And um, I think it means I'm getting old, right? <laughs> I mean, it, no, I've been unbelievably fortunate. The support uh, we get, the team we we have, has made everything possible, and uh, I feel like we're in the middle of it you know this is it's not the, not the end and we got a lot left to do including uh, the derby got Joel up your thoughts on Joel the rider what do you think uh, of his arm I think it's extremely obvious that uh, Joel gets a tremendous amount of run out of horses I mean he's just got a way about him that uh, I, I love the fact that he rode him in the Louisiana Derby and I had him come out and work him this morning so that he could feel the progression of the horse as far as direction and uh, put him as confident as uh, we are. I'm thinking it's been a while since you've had a derby starter that wasn't a stakes winner at some place, point going. Maybe into. that's what I needed all this time. Well, I was going to say after last year, it, Rich it, Strike hadn't right. won a stakes. Well, it was, maybe that's the... Uh, you know, we're following that, only I didn't want to wait until the day before to scratch in. I don't, so I ran in Lexington, I, you know, I don't But yeah, that, uh, it, it, the Derby's such an event that uh, the circumstances, and you mentioned liking the timing of the series in New Orleans, which we didn't get any of with him this year. And so it's so unorthodox, but we're very healthy and He's in great shape 12 days before the Derby. So it's just so many different ways to get here, actually. How, how much, was it a concern at all running back? I mean, if you wanted to run oh, in the I, Derby, you're going to have to run him back, but. I felt like he needed it. I mean, he's still not as focused pre-race as he needs to be. And I think racing will help that. And there's, we have not gotten his best race yet. But everybody's seen his potential, and he's a, a lot of people pick him because they want to see something nobody does. Because they, there's a lot of belief there, and I'm on that list. I, I believe in the horse. Well, so had he had enough points to get in, to be sure to get in, would you have considered no, running back? I wouldn't have. Done you it. wouldn't have run him back. Yeah. yeah. No, the mile and a sixteenth was extremely concerning to me, off of you know how coming off the mile and three sixteenths at Louisiana Downs. I, I thought he was extremely fortunate to get the points. You mentioned that he's, of course, that you feel like there's still more there. As a trainer, how do you get that out of a horse? You can't just go and give him a chalk talk and well, say, you're I, not trying I, hard enough. What? I think that it's beneficial in the long run. Are you there yet? And uh, I think that we saw that from his father as well, and it ended up working out pretty good for us. So. I think Attention that horsemen, uh, as long as you're healthy and uh, physically today. improving, and better races are ahead of you. Um, the anxiousness of not winning the Derby, um, Epicenter's close defeat last year, I think, is heightened. Uh, you know the you know the uh, <laughs> the want to do it. No, I was going to just ask you that exact question. You so many wins, so many accomplishments. I mean, how much was that first, well, that first derby win? There's, there's a reason why. There just is. You know, it, it's how things work out. Maybe I'm <laughs> uh, ridiculously optimistic, but you think uh, what could have been better than Epicenter winning the derby last year? Well, maybe doing it with a gun runner. Maybe that's what it'll take.